Okay, I would like to welcome Ray Felix from Bronx Heroes. It's been a while, Ray. It's uh, been a try. while, man. Yes. Ten years. <laughs> yes, ten years. Well, no, not quite ten, but well, eight yeah. years. Um, <laughs> so uh, the last time we I interviewed you was over the whole superhero, the word that was trademarked by both DC and Marvel. Right, right. And uh, I'll have the links below for everyone to check out and see. Uh, now... Currently, you're having another battle with them. You're back in the ring. Um, back in the ring. Back in the ring. Now, before we get to that, I mean, you give me a quick update on, on, on that. We'll get talking about that. I did see Bleeding Cool had an article, and I saw the, the headline. I clicked on it. It said something to the effect of Bronx Heroes versus Antarctic Press versus DC. I clicked on it. And there was no meat to it. It was just completely clickbait. Yeah, um, yeah. Now, uh, tell me a little bit about that. Or tell us a little bit about that. That whole, like, uh, that whole DC versus Antarctica versus Bronx Heroes uh, Bleeding Cool article was crap. It was just not accurate at all. I had set it up where, well, first of all, I wonder where they got their information from because I didn't advertise that I trademark uh the word punchline um the same day they made the announcement i did go on the uspto i did check to see if it was registered and i did register it because uh punchline was a character that i submitted to um an editor at dc comics 12 years ago or more it was actually it was more than that. it was 2005 so um to about 15 years ago right uh at a comic convention and this is not the first time DC has stolen ideas from me. So I was I had to put down. So they made this announcement. Right. I did my homework, checked it out, and saw that they didn't do – they made an announcement without protecting their characters. So I went ahead of them and actually just registered it. Wow. Now, in terms of the Bleeding Cool article, uh, I know that you ex had expressed to me that you had contacted Bleeding Cool because – Yes, from my true. And my understanding is you had contacted Antarctic Press. And, yeah, I uh, and so uh, in terms of Antarctic Press, what happened? No, no. So I contacted I, – I did it in this order. I trademarked the – first I did the trademark. Uh, then I um, wrote a letter to DC's lawyers the same day um, after I trademarked the, the name. Right. I informed them uh, of their announcement, you know, copying and pasting uh, an article by, I don't know if it was Comic Rants or Bleeding Clue or Punchline's announcement, uh, and then explaining to them the situation of mm -hmm. me and this editor, uh, um, our relationship as student and teacher right. back in the 90s. And then later on, sitting together at a convention where he was looking at my artwork. We were sitting, we were neighbors for a weekend, you know, when you yeah. do conventions, you have. Mm -hmm. So he's looking at my portfolio over and over again. This is before the Bronx Heroes actually became a thing. I was still Cup of Java Studio. Right. I remember. Um, and uh, I was still doing, you know, I was like 28 or something, or I don't remember, but it was like, I was young. Wow. wow. <laughs> and I was Still doing submissions for DC and Marvel. So, you know, like, you know, today, like they sell pinups of characters and their remixes and things like that. I had a similar thing, but I had it with a script, a breakdown of issues for Elseworlds. And he asked for it. He wanted the original art. And I was like, well, I can't give you the originals. I'll make copies for you. Right. Um, and I said, you know, would you take a look at this script that I have? There's a story. Would you be willing to just give me some pointers, give me some notes? So it's right. not like I'm making an official DC submission. Um, right. And he's a prominent DC editor. You know, he was one of the top editors at DC for a long time. And um, I, you know, I felt like there could be some trust there because his wife was an educator. I'm an educator. He also taught, you know, it was like eight years after I was his student, right? Right, From right. Three to 2005. You know, and I just let them know. I said, hey, you know, I'm just looking for feedback, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Now, uh, in, in terms of yeah. uh, in terms of bleeding cool, right. so you reached out to try to explain more of the story, and we'll get back to right. the educator so side. What I what I call bleeding. Sorry to go, go off as a tangent, but what I would call yeah, bleeding no, no, cool. No, no, that's great. That's great. Yes. I I can't. I contacted bleeding cool, and told them, hey, I just read your article. Thanks for the shout out. We really want to know the real story, which is what I just explained to you. Um, um, that um, you should contact me, and I left them my phone number, and I left them the information like how to reach me, you know, on on uh, Messenger, right? On Facebook. He never contacted me. Um, then I reached out to Antarctic uh, Press, spoke to one of the creators there uh, for Punchline, and uh, said, "Hey, you know, let's indies have to stick together. Let's uh, go up against DC. They're using our character. I have nothing against you. Like this article is insinuating." Right. I hope you feel the same. And, you know, my character's punchline clown detective. His, his punchline, there's a difference, you know. Right. Um, so, um, and the reason why I did that as well, because punchline is a generic term. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, you know, the punchline to a joke, right? Generic. Right. And then there's also 700 punchline trademarks in wow. existence right wow. now. So, I was like, well, why am I going to just do punchline? I'll just do punchline clown detective, you know, because uh, I was already in the works of working on um, a comic book uh, of punchline right. uh, during the summer. And I changed the character from a Batman villain, which was actually part of my proposal 12 years ago. She was like the end uh, of Harley Quinn after she died. She was like uh, one of Joker's henchmen, you know, right. after his death. Uh, and I said, well, let me change it. I'm not going to make it a villain. I don't want it to be DC-like. So I made her a detective, you know, and created this world where you can be a clown and a detective. Right. You know? <laughs> right. 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 Why not? Right? Why not? You have monster detectives, right? You had a, you know, it's like, why not a clown? Like, yeah, well, well, why, why not? Now, it's really interesting that you bring that up about uh, – so you, you got a lot – you wanted to make sure that everything was cool with Antarctic Press. Right. Uh, you have this headline from Bleeding Cool. And what's really interesting is that when I mentioned on my Twitter, and I didn't right. even know that the founder even knew that I even existed at Bleeding Cool, I tweeted out, right. um, you know, usually my usual workload type stuff that I'm doing. And by the way, I'm going to be yeah. interviewing my friend. And all of a sudden, <laughs> due to some of the Bleeding Cool stuff, and out of nowhere, he responds. Right. <laughs> And uh, and I imagine he had, just let everyone know he he had said that he would get back to you on the Twitter thing right. and he was trying to make it he was trying to play I guess uh, sort of innocent about that did he ever get All back right. to you No he didn't he did yeah <laughs> in fact you notified me and then I copied and pasted his message that my message to him on Messenger on his Twitter and then he deleted it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's very. It was it was very very interesting uh, how that played out. I was like, wow, I I, I didn't know uh, uh, bleeding cool fall uh, even knew who I was. So what's interesting? It was really sad too, though, because you're explaining and you tried to explain to them about how Antarctic Press didn't have an issue uh, right. with you, didn't have an issue, uh, right, and whatnot. And then he starts talking about defending trademarks, which is really funny because. The last time I talked to you was about actually Avenger. challenging the trademark for the word superhero. So I think right. both of us know full well how this is done. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I feel like his article, I mean, even though he gave me some attention, which was nice, I mean, to, uh, I think that he was insinuating a fight. Maybe DC is like, hey, there's this other book we're stealing from called Punchline. We didn't know about this guy. <laughs> right. Maybe right. you can get them fighting against each other because that's the way they did it. It was like pitting Antarctic versus me. There was right. another guy called uh, has a book called The Tap Dance Killer, and he had a male character called Punchline as, as a clown. Right. And it was a, it's a mime character, Punch uh, uh, Tap Dance Killer. The, these guys are talented artists. I mean, honestly, I don't see why Antarctic Press wouldn't sue them because aspects of their punchline character I've seen has been adapted lately with the Harley Quinn. Like the, the, she has knee pads with stars on them and they're the exact same color, red and black. <laughs> like, right. 
Right. I mean, I can see. I mean, hey, well, they they buy our books. They buy our books. They 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 nitpick and steal what they can. And that's really what comes down to the next thing I want to talk to you about, and that is the fact that um, in terms of dealing with Mar uh, Marvel or DC, the big boys, and challenging trademark right. and copyright. Uh, I mean, first of all, are you going to challenge them in terms of the trademark for Punchline? Yeah. Good. Um, if they, I mean, if they actually try to say, hey, that's ours, I'm like, you. Right, <laughs> right. Like, they didn't try to trademark it. Right, right. Uh, right. I yeah, mean, okay. I own it fair and square. They try to steal, I mean, even though they threw a dress on the character and colored her purple and black, it's like, still the same character you know the face is similar uh it's just like the, with the signal two years ago i don't know if we ever spoke about this but two years ago they came up with a character called the lark he was 95 or 98 percent exactly like black power mm -hmm. yes we did talk about that all right so you were talking about black power uh, right black so power. two years ago Black Power was being ripped off by a character called the Lark. Um, in New York Comic Con 2008, I was releasing posters. And I still have extras of those of Black Power, fully yellow. He was, he was like a yellow orange. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I had postcards of him uh, with yellow orange and black, you know, half black, half yellow orange. And then we had right. full yellow orange. But when we put the book out, it actually ended up coming out. Um, actually, that was before. That was like the year before, so it's probably 2007. Then 2008, we actually, when the book came out, we actually changed them to the color purple. And uh, no pun intended. Uh, but you know, it's yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and DC ripped it off. So I wrote them a letter to the, their lawyers in New York, uh, Kenyon and Kenyon. And I said, look, you're actually infringing on. My copyright, uh, my copyright of Bronx Heroes and my trademark of Bronx Heroes, and Black Power is a character that was who debuted in the World Without Superheroes, uh, which is subject of our lawsuit. And right. New York lawyers were like, "Well, the word superhero has nothing to do with this character, the Black Power, because you know I have Black Power trademark, I have Bronx Heroes trademark. Right? Uh, we don't see how these characters look similar. Characters, you know." They all look, they're a variation of each other, you know, it's derivative, whatever. Right. So, so I'd like to see someone rip off Spider rip off Spider Man and see how fast right. uh, they, they walk away. Right, exactly. Them. Right. So I wow. just told them, okay, you don't think it looks alike? I took, a, I took a drawing from online of the character, cleaned it up, like made it black and white. I painted them the same colors as my character. I sent it back to him. I said, what do you think about that now? He didn't respond. But wow. <laughs> a year later, because he looked identical. And then a year later, <laughs> they changed the character. They changed his name to The Signal. They debuted him in a book called Batman and The Signal. Right. And then they changed his costume. But still, even though they changed his costumes, there were still aspects that were not the same as before. But they changed new aspects that made it look even closer to the character than it was before, you know? But it was enough of a change that you, you can't say, oh, this is my character. Before right. it was identical, you know? Right. Now, so this, this was like 75% versus the 95, 98% it was. So I left it alone. I was like, fine, they changed it, you know? Right. But now they're drawing, doing letters and they put in with Black Lightning in the comic books as like a Black Lightning sidekick. Oh, wow. And that pissed me off because now they're drawing his face and they're going back to those old designs of trying to make him look like, you know, he had a motorcycle helmet type thing before, but now they're making his face, his mask look just like Black Power now. Wow. And I was like, that's not cool. So I, I had to reach out to them again about that. So, um, so it's and the same thing. So when I wrote the Macis and Desist, I mentioned uh, another character that I didn't make a big deal about back when it happened because it was right after the lawsuit in 2014. Right. They ripped off – I should have made a big deal about it. And the Batwoman comic book, The New 52, I discovered after the lawsuit that she – there was a um, – it's a Kane. I forget. I don't know her. I think you know, Alice – they call her Alice Kane or whatever. Right. She's in the TV show now. She has the same exact design and hairstyle as the character that I created. Right. For that this DC proposal. I didn't make a big deal about it. And through the years, I did see 
them stealing aspects of it, but I figured, well, you know, it's Batman and Robin. I'm like, you know, I don't have a claim on that. Right. But now you're taking original characters that are not in the DC Batman universe. They're not remixes. They're fresh, brand new characters, right. and then you're and this, using them. And this kind of ties back to what you were originally getting into, where you say was a was a side note, but it wasn't really right. a side note. We were going to get to talk about that, uh, sort of like a, I guess you could say, as, as sort of a, as a as a as a jam talking about the issues 